Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're uh, just making some changes and doing some flight testing today. Uh, this you may recognize is our old uh, PLX or PX2. We've uh, unlocked uh, mature supersonic flight, so we're going to upgrade from its four uh, Derwent 5 engines to these two afterburning turbojets that I can't remember the name of currently. Uh, I don't really like how those landing gear are sitting in there. Um, it seems that they have been moved back in the loading process. Not everything is lined up exactly the way it should. Uh, and I would kind of like to get those out of the engine. I know it doesn't really make a huge difference, but it bothers me just a bit. So we'll just nudge them forward. I don't really want to lower them because I like that this sits on all of the landing gears when it's on the runway. Alright, just a quick verification here with uh, FAR. All of our derivatives look pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of that yaw side slip, but that's not a huge concern, truly. So, um, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's just correct our staging. We should probably fire up these engines first before we go to our solid assist motors and we're going to rename it the x3 the pl or the px3 sorry do a quick save yeah let's uh let's take it out for a test run shall we yeah 25 minutes should be good simulate yeah now the loading screen everybody loves the loading screen so we have a contract, uh, I've already accepted it, but it's to do something like between 615 and 815 meters per second at, uh, I think, an altitude of above 14 kilometers, but below 15 and a half kilometers. Uh, don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% certain. Um, I'm fairly sure this aircraft can do it as it stands, at least uh, with the upgraded engines we'll have a higher start speed. I don't think the speed is really the problem, it's really the altitude and the duration. We have to hold that speed for three minutes. It's so, alright, engines pegged, but they'll take a little while to spool up, but uh, these two engines provide well more than double the thrust, even on the ground, that those four Derwins did. Yeah, a little bit of correction, let's not go flying off the runway. Yeah, full afterburner, that's just super pretty. Oh yeah, already. Alright, let's just go ahead and hit those JTOs. Um, uh oh. Yeah, looks like we lost our front landing gear. Again, as always, that little gear is just not built to handle the stress of this thing going that fast down the runway. But I think that explosion is what nudged us airborne. So, you know, there, then there's that. And we will spend just a couple of minutes here getting to altitude. Oh yes. <laughs> the carpet bombing. Good. Pretty sure there's no spectators allowed down there, but either way, they won't be watching this computerized simulation. Uh, it looks like the pigeon's main, I guess it's not the main tank, but the central tank on the pigeon looks like it got pitched forward a bit. I hope that doesn't create an issue. Part of the separation motors are there. That might throw that thrust of that off a bit. All right, well, let's just go ahead and time warp out to range. You know what? I, we really don't need to. Don't really need to go to range and then turn around. This is just a simulation after all. So uh, I think we'll just uh, we'll take the test right off the bat. Just so uh, I'm gonna get it up to altitude, and we'll go from there. So here we are in post and time edit, flying up to altitude. Uh, 14 kilometers should be good. Uh, we'll go ahead and just try to maintain some of that altitude and we'll be go for set. Oh, wow. The added thrust from those engines really makes that behave a lot differently. But uh, all six of our XLR-11s are lit. And wow, the pigeon is stable in flight and gaining altitude like crazy. That should be fun. Uh, I wish I had stage recovery. We could get all of that back. Alright, engines at full bore. We're just going to level out 
This is uh, about at the appropriate altitude for this test, and really we're just going to put the pedal to the floor and see exactly how fast we can get this thing to go. Uh, we're showing some shock effects. <laughs> Amazing power of those engines pushing us well beyond Mach 2. Now we're starting to show some real heating. Oh, and particle effects even. We're leaving a plasma trail, we're going so fast. And really, like, I thought this thing was going to be capable of going a lot faster. Um, I'm going to be shocked if we break the 1300 meters per second, uh, the way our fuel drain is looking. Alright, we're just going to try to maintain some of our altitude. The higher up we are, the thinner the atmosphere really the less drag we'll have but wow look at that really hoping our cockpit doesn't explode that would put a very swift end to this test all right well we've burned out and now we're starting our de deceleration jeez yeah deceleration comes pretty quick um I'm pretty sure, certain that was not three minutes worth of flight. Uh, this aircraft is probably not going to be good enough to satisfy this contract, at least not as it stands now. But we have lots of altitude and plenty of speed. So we're just going to try to get this as close to KSC as we can. Uh, it would be, this thing is an exceptional glider. It is an exceptional aircraft if I may say so myself not to humble brag there but a nice long slow turnaround about 4G turn doesn't really seem all that gentle to Val but you know what she's a trooper she's pretty good at this job as it turns out and we'll just go ahead and try to get ourselves a little lined up set in our glide scope and just uh, let it ride and this is our nice long easy trip home uh, Val's pretty much just standing off the stick she set in a heading and uh, just let it go very little course correction going on here all in all but it's able to fly out to range up to altitude light the burners and go full bore and then just sail easily past KSC on the way back is pretty damn impressive I would think uh, I really wonder if any of the X-Planes had such an incredible glide scope. So Val's going to do a tight and under. Uh, I probably should have done this maneuver a lot further away. We have a lot of speed and altitude. So we're going to pin it in and just uh, start trying to line up for the runway. Uh, Diving down like this really just gives us a longer, flatter approach, which is hopefully going to bleed off some speed. Um, we know coming into this we're going to have to do a shoot landing, because uh, all of our landing gears are broke. And this is the older design that has two forward parachutes instead of one, and they all auto-cut on ground contact, which is a pretty serious design flaw. But getting it in and close to home is her mission objective currently. Alright, those rear two landing gear are down. Uh, but yeah, still blisteringly fast for this approach. Well over what I think is about the 105 meter per second touchdown speed we would like to see. We're just going to go ahead and throw those chutes out. You know, catch the aircraft and bring it to a sudden stop and a very slow descent now uh, this is in post so uh, I already know what's going to happen but you'll see the critical design flaw that we have with this uh, particular parachute setup and why we will not be flying this aircraft in its current configuration all of that and only the cockpit explodes. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I will see you next time.